Sports Illustrated, Pro Wrestling Insider, Justin Barrasso, joining us right now via Zoom here on Monday Night Mania. And I'm watching Survivor Series on Saturday night. For, As a, the, dude, Saturday, yeah, let me ask you, the Saturday night pay-per-views are now regular, but yeah. I kind of feel like they came out of no, like they make it feel like this has been the norm and it hasn't been. Well, I, did I, you I, know this was going to happen or did they announce this? It's weird. Yeah. When they, they announced at the beginning of the year, the yearly schedule, but Danny, are you talking as a season ticket holder right now? I think you've got to make that differentiation for those listening. I love your, if, if you're a season ticket holder, I think, you know, there are, there's going to be a lot of Saturdays, AEW too, right? AEW kind of ushered in the Saturdays. I like it. And it's, it's, it's um, for kind of a uh, funky reason. I, I like it because for the big shows like SummerSlam was a Saturday night, which is odd because you're so used to being on a Sunday. Sunday night was the Ric Flair tribute show, uh, farewell show, which wasn't great by any means. Right. But if you like Flair, you want to watch. I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed seeing Bret Hart in the crowd cheering and Taker. And I liked it. Last night was the Ricky Steamboat match, and that was well done, too. So I like that it opens the Sundays up to maybe something different, the indies, and you get a different highlight of um, of wrestler. But I don't mind the Saturdays, personally. Maybe just because I'm so used to watching UFC on Saturdays, I don't mind watching pro wrestling on Saturday. No, I love it. I, I'm, I hope that didn't sound like a complaint. I love it. I just It feels like they expect us to now believe that's that's been the norm forever, and it hasn't been. And I'm, I'm thinking Saturday, I'm like, they don't do Sunday pay per views anymore, which is fine. I like the Saturday night. Again, every but back it kind of it kind of goes back to their roots. Like Vince would just run pay per views whenever. Like the summer, the original SummerSlam may have been on a Monday or a Tuesday. I mean, they would just run whenever they could run, right? And then it just became naturally like the Survivor Series was what th- a Thanksgiving Day tradition because pro wrestling was always so intertwined with Thanksgiving. Then it was Thanksgiving Eve. Then it was around Thanksgiving, and now it just falls where it falls. But um, yeah, I like the Saturdays too. I think if you're like, I'll never forget. It was at WrestleMania 35. That's the Becky Lynch one. The, um, mm-hmm. the one at, um, at the Meadowlands, Danny, help me out. 35 was, um, what was this <laughs> last one? 38 was in, it's, it wasn't in Jersey. Dallas. So it's Jersey. Oh, MetLife. 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 Thank you. It's at MetLife. And I remember it was the second to last match. I believe was the intercontinental title match. It was Finn Balor as the demon against Bob, uh, heel Bobby Lashley and, and Finn won the belt. And that's the second to last match. It was so late in the night. It's a Sunday night. It's a school night. The demon, I would think that's a, that's a character that's supposed to play, play into the wheelhouse of, you know, what you're, I don't know, five through 12 year olds, five through 15 year olds, children. Right. But they're all in, you would think they're all in bed. It's a school night. So it was to me, it's Saturday is the perfect because wrestling's unique. It's not, um, it's not just one fan base. It's not like just, Guys and their, people in their twenties. It's it's such a wide range, which is tricky too. How do you appeal to six year olds and fifty six year olds? They're all watching the same thing. So wrestling's kind of unique in that regard. Where with football, it's easy. We just want the Pats to win. So football, that, uh, excuse me, uh, wrestling. That's one of those unique elements of it. But I do think mm. it's perfect because if you're watching with your kids, if you're watching with your buddies, you're waking up on Sunday instead of waking up on Monday morning. Yeah, I mean, again, I like the Saturday night pay-per-views. When it comes to WrestleMania, though, the two-night event, it's too much. Like you mentioned, you know, all of a sudden, it's 11. The second-to-last match on Sunday is 11.30 on on Sunday night. Like, when I got through this past WrestleMania, by the time I got to Sunday night, I didn't even want to watch Roman Reigns' Brock Lesnar. I was exhausted. I was like, I just watched 17 hours of wrestling this weekend and I, I need to go to bed, but now the only match I really cared about going in is on, so I guess I have to stay up and watch it. Which it, makes it, it hard to tough. be the main event because you've seen everything and you're getting your gassed and you're I thought the AEW pay-per-view what a couple of weekends ago, full gear, was a little on the and I wrote this, it was too long. Where I thought, um, I'm curious what WrestleMania will look like if it stay if WWE stays the way it stays with Triple H, it looks like it will. I do think we're gonna see a Vince come back at some point or at least an attempt, like Napoleon almost. I don't know how that, to me, that has to happen after the TV deal signed. But I just don't see how a guy who was a, from every account, whether you liked him, you hated him, you loved him, he was a workaholic, how he doesn't want to come back. But uh, my point being, with Triple H in charge of creative, his cards are really smooth or slick or compact. Like Survivor Series, five matches. Now, I know that the the beginning and end, they went long, right? The War Games matches, they're designed to go long. But I thought the Ronda match wasn't great. Um, 
I thought Finn Balor, AJ was phenomenal. That was my favorite match of the night. And then the triple threat match, that was really good too. Um, I know people didn't love Theory winning, but I, I like the story they told in that match. So you hit on four, or five, four out of five of those matches. I'm curious what Triple H does with Mania. That's the worst thing that could happen to WrestleMania. Not the two nights, but the fact it's uh, everybody's on the card show. Mania should be special. Mania should be a tight card. Like, I love WrestleMania 30. There's not too many matches. Maybe a match gets cut here or there, but Mania shouldn't be, let's roll everybody out of the locker room. Mania should be the best of the best. If you want to get on a WrestleMania card, even if it's two nights, Danny, that's fine. If it's two five-card ma- uh, five, five matches, that's still 10 matches. Mm-hmm. Matches, right? So uh, I, I think that this is a big mania for, for Paul Levesque to, to show what he can do creatively, but I think they got to get away from, you know, eight matches in one night. That's a lot. Or more, 10 matches in a night. You're really testing people's patience, especially over a two-night two night, um, event. Yeah. Now, hold that thought on Vince and Triple H. I will ask you about that in a, in a few minutes. But Survivor Series, I mean, the main event, that's what everyone's watching for, right? The bloodline. And I, I don't know if you've heard, I've, I've expressed how I feel about this storyline. And I just, they need, they should get an award. And I'm talking about everybody from Roman Reigns to Sami Zayn, to the Usos, to Solo, to even the way Kevin Owens sold that on, on Saturday night, Survivor Series. The bloodline storyline is perhaps the best storyline I've ever seen in the history of wrestling. And they added another twist at the end of that. And, and I'm curious to get your take on it because the twist that I saw was, yeah, there's the beauty of Sami Zayn and Jey Uso hugging and Sami saves the day and he's not going to turn his back on the bloodline. And, and he's maybe not just honorary Uso anymore. Maybe he's, you know, a full-time Uso. But you saw Roman looking at him. And you saw Roman not winning it for his team. And I'm I, I, to me, like the curveball they're about to throw is, okay, now Jey Uso trusts Sammy, but Roman might not because he's a little jealous of Sam of Sammy Zayn. And they kind of they they made you think that a little bit, I think. Absolutely. Which the is the great. look at the end was was so well done. Great catch. Uh also too, the segments throughout the show in the you know, the background segments with Roman and uh, the Usos with Roman and Sammy in the background. He said a few things. I like when he said, call Sammy Zayn. Paul Heyman was so good. And he doesn't even need to speak, Paul, though he's tremendous on the mic. Paul with his facials was so dynamic. And Paul made those in the background, right? The eyes get bulging. He was just so damn good. Yeah, all, the, all everyone involved in that has been great. And how long can you watch? It's been 800, over 800 days. How long can you watch Roman be the guy? and just run through opponents. You needed something like this. I do think Heyman, um, I asked him that question in the post-press conference after the show, and he gave a really good answer. It was funny. Sammy even said, thank you, Paul. Um, he talked about why. I did see that, yeah. Yeah, so valuable for, he's he's added a new element. And I don't even think to the point where they were expecting it would go this well, this long. But I, you're absolutely right, though, and you caught it. You can't turn on somebody like the you don't fall until you reach the top. And that's when you start to worry. Like Sammy reached his peak creatively, right? S- Saturday night. And then there was the funny video somebody posted on, I saw it on Twitter. One of the house shows he's doing uh, handshakes with Jay. Like it's <laughs> coming and it's imminent. What a great story. It's like Shakespearean, but with Roman Reigns and with Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso. And I-, I think if you could, if you want to nitpick and critique the bloodline, the two likable. Right, they're two Romans, just so damn charismatic. Um, and the Usos, I I don't know what it is about those two guys. It, they're just very likable. Maybe they've been around forever. They, they grew up in the business, right? Like I, I just, as a wrestling fan, I think they're very enjoyable to watch. Uh, but that they're gonna when they turn on Sammy, that is gonna be a reason to really dislike them and for them to reintroduce themselves as villains. So I'm excited to see what comes next. And that, that feels like it's coming again sooner than later. I don't know. I because this the story that's being told, I think it's the great it's maybe the greatest story that WWE has ever told. Because again, it's gone on for so long and they have these these little curveballs that they're throwing. And I don't know. I guess it depends on on what their plans are for Roman, because 
you, you, you start talking about The Rock coming in. You, know, you start thinking about Cody Rhodes. I think The Rock's going to work. Love do it. you think so? So do, who do you think to, they I'm know? Sorry, I hate to say this. Who wants to watch that match? Like, the Rock should be a special attraction guy. We are just so far, and I, I love The Rock. Right? This is an anti-Rock at all. But why would you want to see The Rock work the main event? Like, The Rock isn't that guy anymore. The Rock is a special attraction guy. He comes in for small hits. Like, his time is doing that. I mean, he's, he's a megastar. That time's passed. To me, I'd rather see, look, I'll say real quick, though. February is uh, Elimination Chamber in Montreal. What a great main event it would be to have Sammy and Roman. If that's what we're building toward, I mean, that, that Montreal crowd is going to be red hot for, for Zayn. And he's, they can't do that. Oh, I think that's where we're going. No, they can't. That's too soon. There's some things that they can do here. They can, they can do, like, money in the bank. They could do Sammy has money in the back. They could stretch this out. And I think Absolutely. they should, because again, I think it's the, the greatest story they, they've ever told. And I I wanted to just stand up and applaud them all the way that match ended. Oh, would Survivor you rather Series. go on too long with it and, 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 and beat it till it's dead or cut it out? To, I, I think this is going to be one of the few stories they, they cut off at just the right time. And you're going to say, well, it could have gone a little longer. They could have done more. I actually think they're going to get this one right. Um, which means it's maybe going to get cut off early. But if it if it ends with, see, I don't know if I'd want it at WrestleMania, but like if this builds towards Zayn and Owens against the Usos, like to me, I, hey, Mania is great. There's nothing bigger than Mania. But like that's the pay per view main event. I love that match. So I don't know. They, but they have, I guess the point is they have so many ways to go with this. It's going to be fun to watch what comes next. And you and I have had a lot of conversations. We haven't always said that. Sometimes Raw is tough to get through, but or SmackDown, this has been fun. This has been a lot of fun to watch. It's been great. Um, I've loved every single second of it. I think it has put, I mean, it's put Roman on, on a level that yeah. is untouchable. Uh, I do think that, you know, this is, I think I might've texted you even and said at the beginning of it, like this feels stone cold esque, like the rock ask, like they, they're, they're giving him the music, uh, Paul Heyman, like, and he, he's, he's been patient. great with it. He's Roman's been great with it. The credit him too, like Saturday night, the way he kind of played that up, I thought was beautiful, but I don't think this has to even end. I think they could throw us little curveballs. I, I think if it does end, it should end with Sammy. Sammy has to do something bigger to save Roman's ass in an even bigger spot. And I think that has to be at WrestleMania. And maybe that is against the rock. And maybe that's where you, you start to turn the storyline. You, you, do- you mentioned Austin and I'll, I'll make a, I'll try to make a parallel. Like to me, Austin works or with WrestleMania 15, Austin Rock. That works so well because it wasn't Austin Hogan or and I love Savage. It wasn't Austin Savage. It was two guys, like the two guys that define the company. So to me, who are the two guys? Like, I don't know if I'd want to watch. Of course, I'd want to watch that match with the Rock back on Raw, but it's not the same. It's it's not the same Rock, right? He's a different guy. He's got so yeah. much different. Um, so you're saying it's not going to happen, or you don't you don't think it should happen? I don't think it happens. I don't think we see, I don't think the main event at WrestleMania is rock Roman. I also don't think it should. So, so both parts. Um, okay. But you, th- you think the rock not being involved at WrestleMania against Roman, you think that's the rocks decision or WWE's decision? The rocks. I think he would, if, if he wanted to come back, he would do it. But again, I think that it's, it's very hard. That's a very big ask for a guy like that for, for all the responsibilities he has TV shows, movies, um, even it's a big risk, right? Like coming back, he can't cut the same promos that he used to. I don't even know if he can do a rock concert. Those were so fun, but like. He can't I, win either, right? If he's only going to do one match, he can't he, win. Though I'll tell you what, the that's what made, I don't think he gets enough credit for it. Maybe he does, but I thought seeing his run that summer was so good because it made you think, oh, even though his house show dates all ended, it's like maybe he's going to win the SummerSlam match. And he didn't. And Brock came back and you forgot about John, but he was, that was such a good run. And he made you believe he made you suspend disbelief. But to me, if you want people to believe in your product and to believe in what they watch every week, you need the two, your two best guys in that match. So Romans one and who's the other, I think you could make a play for Cody Rhodes when he comes back. But I also think nobody's been better this year in terms of wrestling and maybe even character too, outside of Roman than Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has been so dynamic so great in the ring. They've got backstory. The story too, is that Roman can't beat Seth, right? That's the one guy he can't beat. So the story's there. You can have Seth uh, eliminate Cody from the rumble, even though Cody beat him three times, Seth finally gets his, 
is redemption there. I'm a, I'm a proponent of Mania being Roman Rollins. Excuse me, uh, Reigns Rollins. That's my, I, I don't think you have a bigger, and I don't know what you do the first night. If you, you have the two night main event, um, maybe Becky and, uh, it depends if Sasha's back, but maybe Becky and Bianca. Be- Becky's just such a big star. It's great to have her back in WWE, but I don't know. That's a, that's a big debate, but I, I would go Rollins Reigns personally. Do you think they know right now who's going to beat Roman Reigns? I don't. Oh, they, they don't, they don't know. I think they have ideas. But I mean, then you'd have to ask Paul Levesque, and he's, I'm sure he's not going to give you an answer because you get a two. Of course. But I don't think so. I mean, I think they must have contingency plans because anything can happen. But I, I don't think so. I mean, I think Brock's always a guy. You can't have Brock beat him. I think Rollins has to be a guy. I think Montez Ford could be that guy, but not anytime soon, right? It's going to take time. He's charismatic. He can work in the ring, but he's also hurt right now. I don't know. It's a short list, right? But I'm sure they have. Uh, I'm sure they have a short list of guys, that, but I don't think there's any plans right now. I, and again, I think Roman beating Seth Rollins at Mania is a good story. Roman has to check that box. He's got to check every box in order for somebody to finally beat him. Braun Breaker might be on that list, but again, that's a ways away. I assume Braun Breaker is a post-Mania Raw debut. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's great too. So I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like Austin. You've got to, and Triple H knows this, you've got to get behind the guy who's hot. And right now, it could be Cody. Why not? So this is how it should go down. All right, let's hear it. And I, I, it, what sucks is that Cody doesn't have the money in the bank. And maybe that was the plan before he got hurt. But the way it should go down is The Rock should beat Roman in the main event of WrestleMania and win the title. And then the lights should go out and you should hear wrestling has more than one royal family. And Cody comes in, challenges him for the title, and wins the title. That's how it should go down. Will it go down like that? Probably not. But Mainly Roman because, again, the money in the back. bank's not involved. But Roman never gets his win back against The Rock. Is that an issue? That's not an issue. Because you can just remove Rock from the equation. And now you have you might even be able to have Roman beat Cody and win. See, I think they're going to have to put themselves in position where Roman wins it back again, right? I just don't think he's going to lose it. I think he's going to keep winning. I don't know. I don't think this is... I mean, even if that's the case, I love it. I I agree. Uh, I agree. I'd, I'd be shocked if Mania... And we can have this discussion in a few months, but it's uh, November 28th right now. I'd be shocked if WrestleMania 39 doesn't end with Roman Reigns rem- still and still WWE universal champion all right it's it's not we can rule out one name it's not going to be cm punk right punk's still under contract i mean (laughs) (laughs) what's your take on the cm punk aew relationship because i'll tell you real quick my take on it sure i posted a video people can watch it on my youtube channel here hit that subscribe button but i think that the cm punk and versus the elite is the ultimate work. And we're about to find out when CM Punk comes back to AEW. But that aside, my thoughts aside, what are your thoughts on the CM Punk AEW situation? I don't think we'll see Punk. I don't think Tony will let him work mania, Tony Khan, I wouldn't think. Um, Did you watch the press conference? I've watched it about 20 times. So, so, and the way the sound of the mic, everything about it was just like, I can't stop watching this. You think that was 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 manufactured? I think they still have the video up on AEW's YouTube channel. There's so many things that I every time I watch the press conference, I notice something different where I'm like, that's interesting. The injury, the fact that he's out for another surgery was was interesting timing for me. Um, I think now that they're actually the elite a mocking CM Punk in the ring tells me something. So that was I interesting. Think, I did the interview with Kenny Omega last week, and he said it's time to let it go. And then that runs Wednesday. That ran Tuesday. Wednesday. No, that ran Wednesday. Excuse me. That same night. Wednesday night. Yeah, it was the it was the round our uh, match two in their in their best of seven, and and they they did a lot of punk spots. But that's that's also their mo, right? When it was like Ring of Honor didn't want the Bucks and Kenny doing the New Days. Uh, I remember they used to wear the Bootio shirts, and it was really really fun and really cool and really different, and. 
they didn't like that Ring of Honor because there was no point to it. It wasn't going anywhere. So that's kind of an elite thing. And when I mean elite, I mean like the, the three of them. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily, the punk thing was legit. The press conference was 100% real. They were not expecting it. Whether or not punk manufactured some things because he knew he was going to be out uh, with the injury, that's an interesting debate. But they did not know that was coming. The, the Colt Cabana stuff, um, I mean, it just, a lot of it was <clears throat> planned. Now, I, to me, though, and I've covered all these guys. I've covered the Bucks. I've covered Kenny for years. I was in Japan to cover Kenny. And it was, a, it was a joy and a privilege. I've covered Punk. I've had the privilege of covering Punk for a little while. Um, these guys are all really smart business people. I'd be shocked that they can't make it work. That's the part that gets me. You can't bring Punk back, even to bring Punk back to work Brian Danielson. That wouldn't work. How could that make that a Ring of Honor title match? How would that not work? Um, how, to me, there's just, there's got to be a way to bring Punk back and not lose the guy because he's still a valuable I think we lost. I think we just lost Justin. Oh, he's back. But anyways, you were talking about, um, you know, I'm you covered they Kenny. Find a way to make this work, but yeah, uh, the, the punk press conference that was 100 legit. Um, it wasn't expected. They didn't see it coming. I'm I, I'm a huge fan of Punk's work, right? What he's done for wrestling, and he can still go. Like even if you think Punk's a uh, what did he joke jokingly say? He's a problem. You don't want him in your locker room. Punk can still wrestle matches. Punk can still relate to the fan base. Punk's still still great. I mean, he's, greats are great for a reason. Um, so he's, I don't think he's done wrestling. I think he could do, he could do WWE. I don't know. Like, that'll be interesting too. If Punk's ever a free agent, that'll be really interesting to see. Because one thing you could say about Vince McMahon is if he was going to make money off it, he would put personal differences aside. Well, Triple H, we'll see. Because they had clearly some major differences. So I'll be curious, Danny, what happens. And I think Punk could just run his own shows. Like, he could be the signature guy, like the Ric Flair shows last summer. I think you could have Punk be the main guy and, and build shows around him. I don't think he needs – he's big enough that he doesn't need a promotion behind him, especially if you run the shows in the right places. I, I just think that when you look at CM Punk coming back to wrestling, debuting in AEW, how big of a story that was. You gave him the world championship. Can I Did he get a twenty? Yeah. You and, I, you and I were on the show, and I remember we were both mystified by the fact that Punk's return before that. Do you remember this conversation we had? We were at your, studio, your, your old studio. It was the, Refresh my memory. It was the studio show, and you were furious that that was the comeback because that was, he was, it was a studio show on Fox. Right? Or Fox Sports, whatever. Oh, he did the Fox Sports studio, in-studio show. Okay. I Which get what was, you're saying now. Like, this one was, in comparison, I think this was everything, as a fan, you would have wanted. Like, that one was, it left so much to be desired. Uh, but this one was in Chicago. It was the, the show was built around it. There was intrigue. There was speculation. But I just remember talking with you, and you were so frustrated. I think a lot of us were. That was the punk return. We got a real, so we got a real one. Right? And I, in a year, it was gone. But that's why it's so weird to me because they're going to let that. Let's say you're, you know, look, you have obviously more connections than me. And so your opinions on the wrestling matters hold a lot more weight than mine do. Mine are based on just my own personal conspiracies and how I feel about as a fan. You're a conspiracy but, theorist? Well, on certain things. I mean, you know, last week we did talk a lot about, uh, or two weeks ago on this show, we did a lot of uh, military industrial complex, but we'll leave that for another time. This is not what we're talking about right now. Um, <laughs> we did some JFK stuff on that too. But anyways, I digress. Who, who shot JFK, by the way? You don't want me to get into that. You don't want me to get, let's not, let's. How many guys? I know, I know who did it. I know who did it. Who did it? We don't need to get into it. Who did it? I'm going to make people go back and watch two weeks ago. I told right. you who did it. <laughs> I told people who did it two weeks ago. But you might not even be able to find that. You know, inside that show job. might just be. Inside job. Oh, of course. 100%. 100% inside job. Yeah, Look at everything. Yeah. Inspired before. We can't. Jess, we don't have enough time. We got to stick with wrestling. Okay. Maybe another time. You want to do conspiracies with me on this show one night? We'll love bring to. you in. Because Paul's a big conspiracy guy, too. And we have, you know, we've had fun with that a couple of times. So um, we can and do I got that. A couple but, of conspiracies. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's always fascinating. What we, what the little we know, like Lincoln, even the Lincoln assassination, I think it was like a dozen people were part of that. Right. 
I'm I'm actually not sure about that one. I think it was because there were. I don't know how many. I haven't gone into the. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole as much as the JFK one, obviously, but. I just know what we learned. That one, I just know what we learned in school. The one thing we talked about with JFK is that there's a lot of stuff like Operation Northwoods. They don't teach you that in school. You right? never they, get to they, it because the spring would come and you'd rush through World War II. It was like, I'm just going to get into this and we're done. And then it's June and you're, but yeah. Um, but the Lincoln thing, t- take a look at that too. I think there was 12 people, 13 people, because there were multiple attempts. I think they sent him a shirt at one point that was going to like poison him if he wore it. There were, but you know, United States history has got this uh, tendency, Danny, and we'll get right back to uh, wrestling, but it's got this tendency, even with the NBA referee scandal, it's one lone person, one lone assassin. It's always one person. It's never this multi-tiered, which a lot of these things can't be one person, right? JFK, one, one, one gunman, right? Um, Lincoln, one assassin. Earl Hebner. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't just Earl, but, um, Anyways, we're getting we're officially out. I was trying, I was trying to, you know, get the segue yes. in for you. You had the oh. NBA NBA official stuff. I thought we were getting wrestling, so I threw the Earl Hebner. And he wasn't the only, he couldn't have been the only official fixing it. That's ridiculous. One guy, one guy fixing NBA games. I, I'll, I'll, Jeff Don, Donahue, is that was that his name? Tim Donahue, yeah. He, he, who did yeah. a couple of referee spots, guest referee spots in major league wrestling. I thought it would have gone better than it did. Tim wasn't a wrestling guy, you know, but it was a good idea, right? The, they probably should have tried it years ago. Yeah. Well, what, what was I saying? CM Punk conspiracy theory Yeah, CM is that in my, in my CM Punk conspiracy theory world, I believe that it's just, it's just too strange of a situation that they would want this to end when it feels like it just began. And it seemed like every wrestling fan wanted this. You can't just have three guys in a locker room not like it. I don't care if there's a fight or not, and then it ends and it's over. So in my opinion, it's like, well, you got to do things differently than WWE if you're AEW, right? WWE could not do, and this is me thinking that the whole thing was a work, but let's just entertain the fact that the whole thing was a work. Let's even entertain the fact- You entertain my JFK conversation. I'll entertain yours as well, yeah. Let's entertain the fact that Colt Cabana and CM Punk are still best friends. Let's just entertain, let's start all the way back there. And that this is some type of crazy storyline that these very entertaining, creative individuals, which we we know the Young Bucks to be, and even Tony Khan and all those guys, you know, Chris Jericho behind the scenes, I'm sure. I just, I, when I look at this situation, I, I, I think to myself, they had an opportunity to do something different than WWE. WWE could not do something like this, could not pull something off like this. So AEW went for it and everybody felt for it. And to me, I look at even a guy like Ace Steel. You know what's weird to me about the Ace Steel situation? Tell me. Is they forced him on TV like a couple weeks before that happened. And I'm going, what? they didn't have to do that. That was random. It that was, was a very random introduction to Ace Steel into the average wrestling fan's that life. Story felt and rushed. when I look back on it, I go, oh, there was a, maybe there was a reason they introduced him because he's the only guy they fired. Well, he was working behind, he was working as a producer too, though. So he was work. he didn't come in just to work TV. So Ace was there and they, then they put him on camera. But Ace is a punk guy. I, I think the punk cabana thing is all legit. Um, but to me, you know, it's funny. It doesn't matter if it's, I mean, it matters obviously if it's real or not, but like in terms of what you can do next from a creative standpoint, you've already got people invested. 10 out of 10, right? Like they want to know what's happening next. You've got people invested. So I think that to me, obviously the truth matters, but in terms of wrestling storyline, what you can do next, I think you've got a lot of options if you can figure out a way to play ball. And it's interesting. Tony Khan, I think is a really, really brilliant business person. You know, Tony is, is honest. And I, uh, you know, I think all the things he said about punk are legit and he wants CM Punk to be part of that company. Now maybe punk lost. He should. Absolutely. And there's a way to fix that. You know how you fix that too. If people get tired of seeing punk every week, you don't put them on every, week. if you put punk on every three weeks, you wouldn't get tired of the guy because he who's, t- who's tired of CM. I don't get it though. Who's tired of him? Just the young bucks and Omega say, say in the locker room. Say, I think he was giving, I actually think punk had a lot of really good advice sprinkled through that presser, but he just did it in such a unique manner that it was going to 
ruffle feathers. It was going to, you know, bristle at people's core. Maybe I'm sure that's what he wanted to do, but I don't, it sounds like from people I spoke with in the locker, a lot of punks uh, recommendations, he punked an old school guy. Like there's a reason he got along so well with John Moxley. Moxley is new age as John Moxley is, you know, came from a less Thatcher type uh, upper me in wrestling. Like Moxley's an old school guy too. I don't know. I, I guess my point being, if there are locker room issues, if you're around intermittently, you don't have time for that, right? You're just in, you're out, you're doing yeah. I, I think there's so many ways to make punk work in AEW. And there's so much money to be made. I don't know why you wouldn't. And to me, the easiest thing is you've got maybe the best wrestler in the world on your roster, a guy that is universally respected in Brian Danielson, a guy that has history from what, 17, 16 years ago, 18 years ago with punk. And you can't figure it that that's so have them work. And in the background, you're always thinking, what about punk in Kenny? What about the bucks in Kenny? What about, and, and you have FTR too. So it's easy of six man's. Like have him work, Brian. Who would who would say no to that? Hey, P- Punk gets to work with Brian, make money. Brian gets to work with Punk, and then he'll be an even bigger star, which is crazy to think for the next guy he puts over. Like to me, it's a win for Brian, a win for Punk, a win for AEW. Why wouldn't you do it? Again, Punk's going to be healthy, but I really hope they figure out a way to bring him back. Well, if Tony Khan wants to be Vince McMahon, then he'll do what's best for business. And what's best for business is obviously CM Punk versus Kenny Omega in the main event for the world championship at some point. And I think it will happen because I think the whole thing's a work and we'll be leading to that. So uh, I hope it happens. I don't know. Right now, right now I say 40, 60, no, but the, the fact that punks, I think the, the kind of the, it's interesting that the injury works in everyone's favor. I mean, obviously you don't want the guy to be hurt, but it works in everyone's favor in the sense that it gives them time because I don't think you ever, when did, when did they, you might know this. I've always thought this. I can't find it when I, I Google it. Mm-hmm. When did they know punk was going to need the tricep surgery? That's what he's out with right now. Right. Is it triceps? Yeah. You, but you couldn't have known that. I mean, I think he must've known. When did he know that? He, I mean, you know, your body, right. You must know something's going on that night. He must've known something was wrong. But I mean, Punk goes on the Punk goes on the podium almost immediately after the match, right? So it wasn't like they had time to to do anything with him or to look at him or to outside of you know glancing him over, uh, Doc Sampson. But you, there was no time, so you it, nothing could have been set in stone that night. But of course, no one knows your body better than you. So maybe Punk knew that night, but Punk knew something was wrong. I don't know if he knew the extent, but usually you're the first to know, right? Well, do you think there's, do you think maybe they knew he was going to need that going into the match? Like this is, this gets into my conspiracy that it's a work. They knew they needed to give him time off anyways. And it would be the second time they're giving him time off for surgery in what? In, you in a month. I'll, I'll throw a, re- a wrench in that. But then you don't give him the, the title back because that threw everything off and they had to. Well, wasn't that, that was a strange situation though. What's that? That, that he lost it in the first place. The way didn't he lose it with like a squash match to Moxley? To Moxley? Yeah, but, but it was to build up the paper. And, and, and again, that's where the the uh, uh, Ace Steel storyline came into. Like Punk lost his confidence, kind of Rocky Apollo. He needed to build him back up. Um, that was that story. I thought the story was a little rushed, but it had all the right pieces. And he he did win the belt back. So you have Punk win the belt twice and doesn't defend it once. That can't be the plan. So I, I, and there is a there is a there is a part of the press conference where Punk has his arms and he's flexing his triceps and he's looking down at them, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's playing that up on purpose, knowing that we're going to be talking about the triceps injury. The whole t- I just I see so many little things. We don't have enough time. I kept you longer than uh, I told you I would. Press conference next time, but, but I, I think it's legit. But I, I, hey, okay. No matter what he did, and again, his matches are good. Punk. No matter what, he should. They should still bring him back. They have to. I agree. They should bring him back. If not, Punk will wrestle again. And again, I don't think he needs WWE. I don't know if he'd want to go back. I truly don't know. Maybe he would after this, but yeah, that's it. And, and, and WWE, to me, it's not even this run. It's the money. Like the money with WWE isn't Punk going back. It's, it's going back because of what happens around that. Uh, he's got to go back. They all come back. But, but it's, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? 
all that stuff, right? I don't know if he cares. I'm sure he cares because he's put a lot of time in. But he all, definitely cares. All the money that goes into action figures, into merchandise, into like there, there's still Punk still look at pro wrestling tees. He, Punk's still a top seller there. If he went back to WWE, that's the money, right? Of course, the money from coming back, but it's the money around everything else with WWE's machine. That to me is really valuable if I'm CM Punk for the next 15, 20 years. That's where the money is. That's where I think you could talk me into saying he'd give WWE another go. And they'd be crazy. They'd be crazy not to bring him back, even in a short-term capacity. Um, And you wouldn't have to do Punk Roman. You could do Punk Austin. You could do Punk Cody. You could do Punk Cody. I mean, and go down the list, right? There's just guy after guy. You do Punk Rollins. There's so many guys that would make him look great, and, and he would star. But then that's why I think AEW you can't let him go, Danny. You can't let that guy go. So we'll see. But that it's fun that we're talking about CM Punk again. Well, I it, it is, and I think that after seven. And years, when I when I say WWE, when I say WWE, I'm not even saying now because I do think AEW will have him back in the fold. I'm saying eventually his AEW contract is going to be up after they do bring him back, and they all come back. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame at some point. There's going to be a, w, a real life WWE CM Punk conversation, and this brings me to my final topic with they you. Did, I know we got to let we got to let you go. On his wedding day. I mean, I think there's still I know uh, time heals all wounds, but um, I think if there's one guy not to go back, like I think the Brett thing made too much sense not to. The Warrior thing made sense, but this is again, this is a, we, we've never seen Triple H in this position. What will he do with? I mean, they had some real personal animosity. What happens to those? I think both of them, it's going to be really telling to see what happens next. Well, that's the final topic here, and you can keep this brief if you want. Um, If we're going to have that conversation one day, whether it's next month or three years from now, CM Punk, WWE, Hall of Fame, bring them back for one more run, um, even if it's just, or maybe just a couple matches, will that be Vince McMahon's call? Or Triple H's call to make that call because you mentioned Vince earlier. Obviously, this is Triple H's show right now. You got War Games and Survivor Series. You got Bray Wyatt back. You got Michael Cole talking about Bullet Club, which is awesome. But the fact that they're even mentioning that stuff, to me, I'm going, putting it all together, thinking to myself, none of this would happen with Vince McMahon. It's happening with Triple H. But even saying that, I don't think Vince McMahon is like out golfing every day. Like he's got to be involved somehow, but you would know more than me. So, so we, what is Vince McMahon's current role in WWE? This is uh, information on Vince is scarce from every, every time I ask, I'm told he's not currently involved. I mean, obviously he's on the, um, you know, he's, he's still a majority stakeholder in the company, but in terms of his role in the product, you don't hear anything. I do think it's interesting, Danny that Vince's guys still work there, right? Um, you know, his people still are employed there. I don't know. I mean, I don't think they're going to write Vince out of history because it's, it's Stephanie McMahon helping run the company. It's, it's Paul Levesque. It's, it's Nick Khan. So I don't know. I would just be surprised. I'm not saying Vince is ever going to come back. That ship has probably sailed. And I don't think he can come back while you're negotiating for a new TV deal. It's just messy, right? After everything he went through, these were, these were ugly stories. It was negative press. You don't want, that's the last thing you want when you're trying to negotiate new TV rights. And they should make big money. So to me, it's, it's what happens after they sign a TV deal. Uh, they did release WWE that the investigation was, was, was finished. Uh, on oh, it is? Okay. So I don't know. To me, I don't think there'll be any news on that front until after they sign a new TV deal. And that's, you know whether that happens in, in 2023 or again, I would just be surprised if a guy who's a lifelong workaholic who's built his career on this mountain doesn't want to come back. I'm not saying he's going to come back, but I, again, it's going to be, I think that would be a really interesting story. Everybody wants power, right? So I don't see why he would be any different. Are they going to sell the, the company? Isn't that one of the stories too that's out there? That's been out there for, for a while. I think Stephanie McMahon has built her life around this. I think Triple H or Paul Levesque has built his life around this. I don't see them wanting to sell the company. I suppose everybody's got a price. You know, Nick Khan's interesting because Nick's not a, a WWE lifer, right? It wasn't like he, he, you know, Stephanie's, Stephanie's a McMahon. 
Uh, Paul Levesque grew up, pro, you know, as a pro wrestler, as an indie wrestler, and and made his way in wrestling. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe someday they could get a big backer like UFC has. But I, I see this that family taking a lot of pride in it being family run, family owned, uh, at least the majority share. Um, so I don't I don't think so. Um, I don't. Maybe, maybe the next generation. I don't know if the kids will want that after this, but we got a ways to go before that that becomes an issue. We, we got a ways to go. I don't think we'll be here for that one. Um, <laughs> anyway, they'll have the WWE theme park somewhere in and Disney. I, I before hope, they to, to do go that. full circle on this. I hope Devers is still a Red Sox by then. You know, give him the Pedroia. Dude. <laughs> they they should give Devers whatever he wants. In my yeah, opinion, yeah. You know, you didn't give that to Mookie. Yeah, you, you're not going to give that to Bogots as much as we both love him. You know, he is older than Devis, and he is, you know, I did I, I definitely think with I, I definitely think with Bogots, we can't get to a point where we start overrating him because we're gonna get to a certain number with the contractor. It's gonna be like, eh, guys, I like him, but he's not he's not that guy. Like, like he he's not Devis. Devis is Devis is gonna be is gonna turn out to be a special once in a lifetime player, I think. And he's Would proven you- that in the postseason alone. Since he first came up, would you do six years at twenty five million for Bogarts? Six years, one hundred and twenty five. No, twenty five per year. Oh, twenty five a year. Um, I think he wants close to thirty, right? But he's making twenty. I think if you get between twenty five, yeah. To me, it's about the years. To me, with Bogarts, yeah, it is about if you keep it, keep it within that twenty twenty five range, and yeah, somewhere between four and six years. You know, once you start going seven, eight, nine, ten years with Bogarts, no way. It's the majority um, all over again. But that being said, yeah. I pay him, and it's not my money. But I, if, if it's five years, pay him thirty-two million a year. I pay more for for less years, right? Because I want those next four years, those next five years of Bogarts. This team, for all their problems, and here we are back in the Red Sox, they could contend next year. There's no reason that I mean, it's 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 not. Yeah, of course, are off as bad as this past year was. They still were only a few games out of the playoffs. No, I, I especially with the expanded postseason. You know, just get into the tournament and see what happens. You know, they didn't get in. The, they didn't get in this year, but yeah, go ahead. I know we're going over, but anybody that knows Danny Picard knows the Houston Astros story. I mean, it's it's one of the <laughs> biggest stories to break, and you were the guy that broke it. I'm always amazed that the Sox mashed, and they go up what two games to one. You're rolling at Fenway in the ALCS, and then all of a sudden, the next three, you are just hitting the cover off the ball. Kike, I love Kike. Like, I fell in love that series. Uh, they are just so unstoppable. And then the next three games, what changes? Like, how, and It was bad bullpen management. You don't think there was any funny business? No, I don't. Because they don't hit the ball. The Sox don't hit the ball the rest of the series, consistently like they were. You're talking about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was bad. From what I can re- remember, I was very upset with the way – the bullpen was managed, especially you brought Evaldi out of the pen in one of those games yeah, early. I, I thought they gave was... him the bad. They, gave him the bad they, they squeezed him at home plate, but I like that call. Yeah, I just I, they to, did. I, You're right. I remember yeah. that. To me, uh, Las Diaz, maybe uh, I forget the ump, the home plate ump. But that um, it's always interesting when um, pitchers you've been tattooing just all of a sudden shut you out. But if we're talking conspiracies, I could talk Houston Astros pitching with you all night, but. Uh, I'm a Sox guy, so of course I'm, I'm looking for a uh, biased lens. Well, we'll have a long winter to talk baseball, um, but I'm glad we got you on because I needed your take on the bloodline. I needed your take on CM Punk. We got your extra bonus take on Vince McMahon, <laughs> uh, Triple H. I, I The way I view professional wrestling right now is the bloodline got me back in like full time. Isn't that great? I I, yeah. I love it. I just love everything about it. I, I, I want, like I said, I wanted to stand up and applaud all of them for the way they put that match together on Saturday night. I think the way the storyline has gone has just been, they should get an award for it. I don't think they should end it anytime soon. I also love the Cody Rhodes. I'm one of Cody Rhodes' biggest fans. Um, I think the way he came back was awesome. I, I think, yeah. I think that was his goal to do, to do something when he left the first time to go do the Indies, you know, to go, uh, to, to work in gyms in Connecticut, right? Like this was his plan. And I admire that. I mean, I, I, I admire the way he went about it. If you look at the Cody back then, his body 
you know, his muscle, uh, just the way he's toned his body, the way he's improved his presentation. If Cody stays with the company, I don't think he's the same guy. Um, and that's of course the not. Of gambling on himself and it paying off. And that was perfect. All those matches were awesome. The Mania moment was great. And the two following the Backlash match, Backlash match, and then the uh, Hell in a Cell was wrong. All of those were, were outstanding. All three. Yeah, you, you just got to wonder. You know, that was, I think that was Vince's call to bring him back, right? I mean, if Vince is not around anymore, it has nothing to do with it. You know, is the, is Triple H, you know, is he, is he somebody that's going to give Cody the push that he deserves? I mean, I know, is there bad blood there, you think? Well, no, I think that there, there was some friction, but they understood where it was coming from. But, you know, Vince was so high on Austin Theory. So I don't think that was changing with Money in the Bank because that, that obviously theories change directions without Vince there. Uh, but I don't think that Cody was going to win. Even I, I actually think the injury, again, could pay dividends. If he comes back and, um, you know, if, if you time it out for the Rumble, what a great moment. That yeah, was. you're right. So I'm a Cody guy too. All right, Justin, I got to let you go. Uh, I kept you too long. Thank you. I appreciate it. And before, um, before hopefully you, Danny, Wednesday's column, we'll have um, a feature story with Sammy Zayn talking about his work with the bloodline and everything that's kind of made this work and resonate. So this will, that'll, that'll drop Wednesday afternoon, the weekend wrestling, and there'll be stories throughout the week too. But uh, that's one I think that I'm looking forward to writing. And that's something that uh, I hope people enjoy reading. I was just about to say SI.com. And also they can follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter account? What at is it? Justin Barrasso at conspiracy theories, uh, no, at Justin <laughs> on Twitter. And then um, three Wednesdays, the, a lot of times we'll, we'll run three, four stories in a week, but um, Wednesday is always the resting piece. Uh, Thursday, I've got an MMA piece. Friday, I've got an MMA notebook. But um, if you want to read more about that, I'm excited. Sammy, I thought was great in the interview. We'd never spoke before prior to this call. So I'm really excited to put the piece out there on Wednesday. Yeah, I read your Survivor Series recap the other day. Um, or yesterday, did I read it yesterday? Maybe or today? I read it. I I don't even know what day it is. Thanksgiving threw me off. I don't. Yeah. It's Monday Night Football, so it's Monday Night Monday Night Mania. But um, yeah, I read that. Si.com. He's Justin Barrasso. Follow him. Read it every Wednesday. He's got Sammy Zane, an interview with him this Wednesday. Si.com. Justin, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it.